Welcome back. We're at Flink Forward, the user conference for the Flink community put on by data artisans, the creators of Flink. We're on the ground at the Kabuki Hotel in Pacific Heights in San Francisco. And we have another special guest from Better Cloud, which is uh, a management company. We have Sean Hester, uh, Director of Engineering. And um, Sean, why don't you tell us what, what brings you to Flink Forward? Um, and set us, give us some context for that. For that. Sure, sure. So um, a little over a year ago, we kind of started restructuring our application. We had a, a spike in our vision where we wanted to go a little bit bigger. Um, and at that point, we had done some things that uh, um, were suboptimal, let's say, as far as our, our approach to the way we were handling our, uh, the way we were generating operational intelligence. Um, so we wanted to move to a streaming platform. Uh, we looked at a few different options, and uh, after pretty much a bake-off, Flink came up on top for us. And uh, we've been using it ever since. It's been in production for us for about six months. Uh, we love it. We're big fans. We love their roadmap. So that's why we're here. Okay, so let's unpack that a little more. In the bake-off, what were the... Um, so your use case is management. But within that bake-off, what were the criteria that surfaced as the highest priority? Uh, so for us, we, we knew we wanted to uh, be working with something that was kind of the, the, the latest generation of streaming technology, something that had uh, basically addressed all of the, uh, the Google Mill Wheel paper, big problems, things like managing back pressure, uh, how do you manage uh, you know, checkpointing and restoring of state in a distributed streaming application. Uh, things that we had no interest in, in writing ourselves uh, right. after digging into the problem a little bit. Uh, so we wanted a, a solution that would solve those problems for us and it seemed like it had a really solid community behind it. Uh, and again, Flink came off on top. Okay, so now understanding sort of why you chose uh, Flink, help us understand Better Cloud's service. What do you offer customers um, and how do you see that evolving over time? Sure, sure. So um, you've been calling us a management company, so we, we provide tooling for IT admins to manage their SaaS applications. Uh, so things like the Google Suite or uh, Zendesk or Slack, uh, and we give them kind of that single point of entry, the single pane of glass to see you know, everything, uh, see all their users in one place, what applications are provisioned to which users, et cetera. Um, and so we, we literally go to the APIs of uh, each of our each of our partners that we, we provide support for, uh, gather data, and from there it starts flowing through the stream as a set, a set of change events, basically. Hey, this, this user's had a title update or a manager update. Is that, is that meaningful for us in some way? Do we want to handle, uh, do we want a particular workflow based on that event? Or is, is that something that we need to take into account for a particular uh, operational intelligence? Okay, so th this is, you, you, you dropped in there something really concrete, you know, a change event for, uh, uh, let's say, the role of an employee. That's a very application specific piece of telemetry that's coming out of uh, an app. Very different from saying, well, what's my CPU utilization, which will be the same across all platforms. Correct. So how do you account for, um, let's say, applications that might have employees uh, in, in one SaaS app and also employees in a completely different SaaS app and they emit telemetry or events that mean different things? How do you bridge that? Exactly. Uh, so we have a, a set of teams that's dedicated to just the role of getting data from uh, the SaaS applications yeah. and emitting them into the overall better cloud system. Uh, after that, there's a, another set of teams that's basically dedicated to providing that, that central canonical view of a user or a group or a, a, an asset, a document, et cetera. Uh, so all of those uh, disparate models that might come in from any given SaaS app get normalized by that team uh, into, into what we call our canonical model. And then that's what flows downstream to the teams that I lead to uh, have app operational okay. intelligence run on them. So just to be clear for our uh, mainstream customers who aren't rocket scientists like you, um, when they want to make sense of this, what you're telling them is 
they don't have to be locked into the management solution that comes from a cloud vendor where they're going to harmonize all their telemetry and their management solutions to work seamlessly across their services and the third-party services that are on that platform. What you're saying is you're putting that commonality across apps that you support on different clouds. Yes, exactly. And so we, we provide kind of the, the glue or the homogenization necessary to make that possible. Now, um, this may sound arcane, but you know, being able to put that put put in place that commonality implies that there is overlap, um, complete overlap for that information for how to how to take into account and manage an employee onboarding over here and and one over there. Um, what happens when you know, in, in applications where, unlike in the hardware where it's obviously the same no matter what you're doing, what happens in applications where you can't find a, a full overlap? Well, it, it, it's never a full overlap, uh, but there is typically a, a very core set of properties for a user account, for example, that, that we can work with uh, regardless of what SaaS application uh, we might be uh, integrating with. Um, but we do have uh, you know, kind of special, uh, special areas like metadata areas within our within our events that are dedicated to the, let's say, the original data fresh from the uh, the SaaS applications API, and uh, we can uh, do one-off operations specifically on that uh, that SaaS app data. Uh, but yeah, in general, there is just there is a lot of commonality between the way people model a user account or a distribution group or a document. Okay, interesting. And so the role of streaming technology here is to get those events to you really quickly and then for you to apply your rules to um, identify root cause or even to remediate either with a advice of a, you know, advising a person, an administrator, or automatically. Yes, exactly. And plans plans for adding machine learning to this going forward? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, one of our big asks uh, as we started kind of uh, casting this vision in front of some of our core customers was basically, uh, I don't know what normal is. You figure out what normal is and then let me know when something abnormal happens, which is a you know, perfect use case for machine learning. So oh, we definitely like want to get there. Running steady state, learning, learning the steady state and then finding anomalies. Exactly, exactly. Interesting, okay. Not there yet, but it's definitely on our roadmap. Um, and then what about uh, um, management companies that might say, oh, we're just going to target workloads of this variety, like a, you know, a big data workload, where we're going to take Kafka, Spark, um, Hive, um, and maybe something that you know, predicts and serves, and we're just going to manage that. What, what trade-offs do they get to make that are different from what you, you get to make? I'm not sure I quite understand the question you're getting at. Um, if, they, if, if there's, uh, where they can narrow the scope of the, of the processes they're going to model, or the workloads they're going to model, where it's, say, just big data workloads, and there's, you know, batch, there's going to be some batch interactions, you know, interactive stuff, and they, they are only going to cover a certain number of products because those are the only ones that fit into that type of workload. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so uh, we kind of designed our, our roadmap uh, from the get-go knowing that we, you know, one of our competitive advantages was going to be how quickly can we support additional SaaS applications. So we actually baked in to most of our architecture uh, you know, stuff that's very configuration driven, let's say, versus uh, hard coded. Uh, so it allows okay. us to very quickly kind of onboard new SaaS apps. Okay. Um, so I, I think that, that winds up, you know, the, the value of being able to manage and, and provision, uh, run workflows against, uh, you know, the 20 different SaaS apps that uh, an admin in a modern workplace might be working with is just so valuable that I, I think that's uh, that's going to win the day eventually. Single plane of glass, not at the infrastructure level, but at the application level. Exactly, exactly. Okay. All right. We've been with Sean Hester of Better Cloud, and um, we will be right back. We're at the Flink Forward event 
uh, sponsored by Data Artisans for the Flink user community, the first ever conference in the U.S. for uh, the Flink community, and we'll be back shortly.